Hello everyone, welcome to testing Pekka Starship in stock and in JNSQ in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. Pekka Starship was originally created for realism overhaul, but there was demand for it in stock and in JNSQ. And so Pekka has graciously added configs for JNSQ and of course modified the original config for stock to make it a little bit more sensible, but we'll test that out. So if you are using it in stock, I would recommend, it's probably not necessary, but you can delete the folders that say JNSQ configs and RO configs. And I'll link the mod in the video description. And again, this is Pekka's mod, not my mod, so don't come running to me about it. But uh, uh, you can post your issues on the GitHub. But yes, I do have Hangar Extender in this stock install. Uh, this is stock in terms of not having non-stock parts except for Pekka's mod right now. Uh, otherwise, it does have some visual mods. So, but there's no game-changing mod fun fundamentally, so it should operate the same way. Uh, we have loaded in some tanks. This is, I believe, 100 tons. So we're testing with 100 ton payloads. And I've tried to make sure that this can get out of the cargo bay. So we've got a whole bunch of propellant, and I'll just lock this for safety's sake. I doubt it'll drain, but just in case, and then a bunch of ore. If we take a look here, uh, our current mass, this includes the pad, so so the tower and the over launch mount, so that's, we're just going to see that this is, well, a little bit less than 100 tons, it's like 96 tons, but close enough, we will assume that we are going to get a little bit of extra delta V at the end, and let's bring it outside and see how it goes, but that decoupler is probably not that uh, that's the over the launch mount I guess it can go immediately this is stock after all there's no spool up time all right let's see okay so here we go SAS on throttle I guess that that'll work yeah uh, so I'm going to retract I don't have these on action group right now so I'm gonna retract manually here just to get them out of the way and launch Okay. So here we go. So it is physically smaller. It's scaled down uh, to 64% of its original size. That might be a little bit inconvenient, but it's about the right size to fit about 100 tons in the bay. Uh, you can... There might be other ways of arranging 100 tons than what we have here, but as I've shown, we can fit 100 tons, barely. And we should be able to get it out. Oh, I'm going really steep. Now, in my math for it, we were supposed to reserve 1,000 meters per second in super heavy. Okay, that's 1,000. And considering the velocity we're going at, that should be more than enough to get back home. And we can pretty much flatten out here. Regardless of the version or you know, the planet involved. Re-entry with Starship is still a work in progress. Well, I can turn on the RCS and I guess turn off the the center engines. So now we're just on RCS and reaction wheel and the vacuum engines, which should be locked. The gimbal is locked. Now we're going to end up in a somewhat lopsided orbit like this, so let's just coast for a bit. Starship is just using liquid fuel and oxidizer. The mod propellant is in the cargo. Um, no, but we have the mod propellant here. That might be an old craft file. I don't think the new craft file will have mod propellant like that. That's because old craft files retain their old uh, loads. And I didn't rebuild this one. Okay, well, that is a little bit of an extra bit. We were supposed to end up with a uh, thousand meters per second, but uh, we do have a little bit less payload. So let's release the payload and see if we can get it out here. Eek. Come on, payload. Okay, uh, this one might be a little bit tight. Oh, wait. The stack separator... 
So it has a, let's see. This is certainly not elegant, that's for sure. Yep. Uh, come on, go, go, go. Okay, we didn't need to use time warp. It wasn't very elegant, but we got it out. Okay, and now we have tons to come back home with. So this is very luxurious amounts for your recovery purposes, but it is sort of for, you know, everybody to use rather than people who are super perfect about things. So a thousand is a lot to reserve considering the speeds that we operate around Kerbin with. A thousand would not be much to reserve if you were operating with Earth. JNSQ, it will be a little bit more of a challenge with 1000. So yeah, uh, the Starship is using liquid fuel and oxidizer RCS. The mod propellant is just a legacy of the craft file that I had because I had built it while we still had mod propellant in, but that should be removed now. So, let's see about coming back down. I gotta try that. We'll see. I did not action group the flaps. We'll just leave them out. I know they're supposed to be tucked up, but we'll just see what happens. I feel like I want extra drag around here. We will switch engines at this point, so now we're on the sea level engines. So this does have a reaction wheel in. That gets removed in realism overhaul, but we do have that. And let me just turn off the RCS. I'm going to use full authority to turn. This is as much as it turns just on the reaction wheel. So it's not super powerful. It does take electric charge and everything. But in a pinch, it'll be useful. I'm actually trying to stop the rotation right now. Okay, and then I'll start the rotation in pitch again. We are in the atmosphere. So yeah, not hugely powerful, but maybe helpful here and there. They're not gonna say it's not gonna save you on landing, so. Okay, let's see how it goes. We are here. The KSC's there. Super heavy landing, I mean, should be easy, given the Delta V that we left with it. We have enough Delta V that we could practically stop on a dime, but we do have to be careful. This doesn't seem like it gets a whole lot of drag, is one thing. Especially in stock. Well, I think we're still basically on track right now. There is some overheating there. I'm leaning down here to get some extra lift. I'd like to slow down at a higher altitude than we are right now. Let's go for a more shuttle-like approach. Well, there's the KSC. We can see it. I don't know if we can get to it. Oh, oh, I shouldn't have leaned. Ah, uh, it's not good at doing that. Oh, gosh. Uh, okay, okay. Or, more appropriately, it might be trying to tip to its tail now. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. I think it is, sort of. Can we get it to go retrograde now? Let's see. It's got no COM shifter or anything. Now, that's not the route I would have expected it to take, but <laughs> that would just flip and pitch. Um, Well, ultimately, maybe the engines can do it. Uh, maybe if we... Boy, those. Then the center of lift or pressure will be up front compared to the center of mass. I'm not feeling any actual turning from it. Uh-oh. No, I don't want you to go pointy in first.
I think I might have to light the engines in order to turn, if we can even. Yeah, the problem is we don't have a COM shifter and no way to... I mean, maybe there's a way to simulate the header tanks, but I don't know. We might just have to put tanks, physical tanks, into the nose. Uh, okay, I guess I can turn it like this. Okay, well, I managed to do something here. Uh, okay, alright. We're not hopelessly lost here. We got lots of Delta V. I just didn't get quite back there. We'll have to manage that a little bit better. But we should overshoot more. I did the retro burn early. So next time I do it later, overshoot a bit and use the Delta V to slow down. Oh, jeez. Uh, this is like no drag. Ooh, ow. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it should get a lot more drag than that. I don't know why it's not getting as much drag. It's got, you know, lots of collider stuff on it. Um, yeah, uh, it, um, it might have a little bit too much impact tolerance, but anyway, uh, bits got thrown off anyway, so certainly not perfect. All right, let's try it in JNSQ. Uh, anyway, that's how it is in stock right now. Uh, plenty of margins for you to play around with. Okay, so this time we are in JNSQ. Not so you'd notice right now, but it is scaled up a little bit, and of course the world is scaled up a little bit. And it has more fuel and no mod propellant this time, so this time we have the current version instead of the one that accidentally had mod propellant in. That shouldn't happen with the version that you get, uh, again from the link in the video description. and. We do have the tanks in to simulate the fuel. I, I don't have hangar extender in here, unfortunately. I've kept it trimmed because I've had heating problems in JNSQ. If you watched my JNSQ series, um, I had atmospheric heating issues. We couldn't come back straight from the moon or Minmus at all, even with heat shields. Uh, so yeah, I've been trying to remove some mods in order to see what was going on, but I haven't been successful. So I don't know if we're going to have a Starship test this time for the re-entry. We're just going to test it to orbit and see how that goes. But, oh, let me just shift it down here. So basically we've got one of these tanks and one of those tanks. And combined, they're 97 tons, just about. So that is what we're working with. And let me shift it back up, and we will go outside and see how it does. So we're expecting to take a little bit more to get to orbit. You can tell that the curvature of the world is JNSQ-ish. That's as far out as we can zoom out there. And we are like that. So we've got visual mods and everything. The continents are different. And let's see how it goes. It's actually a little bit shinier and brighter today out here. So SAS on, throttle up, and ignition, and launch. Oh, I should have uh, retracted the disconnects. I did have them on an action route this time. Quite vigorous. You know, assuming you don't lose any engines. Actually, uh, we had tested this in a live stream, and we had Kerbalism in, and Kerbalism loved to take some engines out. So we did have some engine failures during those tests. I've left Kerbalism out of here though, because Kerbalism also limited the ignitions to one, because we didn't have a dedicated Kerbalism config yet. So we haven't configured it, uh, Pekka hasn't configured it for Kerbalism, and I sure haven't. Um, I'm not going to configure it for anything, Pekka has to do that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, there's no Kerbalism config, so we can't, we haven't told it to have more ignitions in Kerbalism, so we'll just have one by default, so we can't do it in there if we want to do any sort of recovery. Or even potentially to complete orbit or adjust our orbit with the main engines. Once again though, we're supposed to reserve 1000 meters per second in the Super Heavy. That should not get us too far out here.
It should give super heavy uh, space-like apoapsis. Close, not exactly, but all right, that's about it. So the rest is starship. I mean, super heavy should be able to come back with no problems. You could probably reserve more in it. For J and SQ, the atmosphere stops at 80 kilometers. We are a little bit under 100 tons. And again, the estimates that were used for the required Delta V to get to orbit were generous. They were meant for everybody to be able to use. So if you can do your launch trajectory very well, you should be able to get to orbit with well over 100 tons with these vehicles, if you can fit that kind of load inside. Maybe ore. Uh, it's tough to get that kind of density though. I am thinking about different uh, hatch textures and stuff like that. You may have seen in previous videos that I have a little habitat module for the inside of it. Uh, Pekka has created a texture uh, option, you know, the stock kind of texture option for that. So once I think about what kind of textures we might want, or Pekka has some suggestions, we'll work on that. Uh, you know, we could have various things happening there. This was always meant to be a temporary texture, not a permanent thing. Okay. Well, that's a good enough orbit, and we do have the 1,000 meters per second that we were expecting. And let's see if we can get the cargo out. It's got a little bit more room in the nose this time. Oh, this time, this time it's a, well, okay, it got caught. <laughs> it was looking like it was going to be a breeze. Come on, leak. Out, 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 out. Okay, it is out. All right, but I'm not going to do re-entry with this because I'm still concerned that this install will have the re-entry heating problem I had in the JNSQ series, and that's no, no bearing on the model. I think it should have sufficient heat tolerance, and it's just a matter of there's some quirkiness in the install, so I'll, I'll do that separately so it doesn't reflect on Pekka's mod. So anyway, I'll link the mod in the video description and it should have plenty of margin for you to do whatever you want to do with it, but uh, not like completely out of whack, like if you tried to use the RO numbers in stock or in JNSQ. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.